Introduction to Tigers Tigers are terrestrial mammals that belong to the genus Panthera a classification that groups the five species of big cats, lions, jaguars, leopards, snow leopards, and tigers. They are easily recognizable by their unique black striped pattern on a dark orange coat and because they are the largest species of the Felidae family. The tiger, Panthera tigris, is the largest of the five big cats that belong to the genus Panthera. Fiery and imposing. Aggressive and powerful. Tigers have aroused fascination in humans through millennia, but they have also experienced threats in their natural environment as a result of human activities. The tigers have an anatomy with over 600 muscles and a strong bone structure that makes them apex predators their natural habitat. They can leap more than 30 feet in a single jump which gives them an advantage when it comes to finding and attacking their prey, and they evolved from their ancestors for almost 2 million years continuously adapting to their environment. All tigers are native to Asia and belong to a single species Panthera tigris. Born to Kill their elegant gait, haughty demeanor, and their dynamic movements are an example of an adapted anatomy for hunting. Since tigers are at the top of the food chain, they are considered super predators. Like the other big cats, tigers are skilled hunters who make use of different techniques to kill other animals, mainly ungulate herbivores, which are their primary food. When detecting a prey, they move very stealthily as close as possible but at a distance to avoid being discovered. Then they slowly creep towards the prey and jump taking it by surprise, so it has a small chance to escape. When tigers catch prey, they bite their neck between the vertebrae to break the spine and kill the animal. Although tigers are extremely efficient hunters, they don't always make the kill as you would expect them to. When they can sneak up on the prey, they only have a few seconds to pounce and to kill them by biting them in the neck area. They can take down animals much larger than themselves. Tiger Information Tigers are the largest cats in the world. However, the size of each particular subspecies depends on several factors like habitat, climate, food, prey and so on. Tigers have a body design that allows them to move along gracefully. They are also incredibly fast when it comes to hunting their prey or getting themselves out of the way of danger. A full-grown tiger can be up to 11 feet in length and weigh as much as 670 pounds. They have a very muscular build too which helps them to take down prey that is many types heavier than they are. The females are smaller than the males for all of the different species of tigers, which is an indicator of sexual dimorphism in this species. Vertebrate Animal Tigers are vertebrates, this means that they have a backbone that supports their body and starts at the skull and ends at the tip of the tail, acting as a flexible central support for the rib cage and limbs. The skeleton is composed of bones, therefore, attached by joints. In the end, more than 200 bones build an active and flexible structure that allows the performance of more than 600 muscles. They have a big skull with a rounded shape and powerful jaws. In fact, the lower jaw is almost straight. They have seven vertebrae in the neck, seven lumbar vertebrae, thirteen thoracic vertebrae and three sacral vertebrae. Its clavicle is small, which favors the execution of larger movements. Each bone in the back of a tiger plays an essential role while moving and even in their behavior. For example, when an individual opens their jaws to growl, wag their tails, or crouches and wait for the ideal moment to jump particular sets of muscles pull at several specific bones. The whole skeleton constitutes about 20% of the total weight of a tiger. A unique coat. They have a broad, short head over a rather thick neck. Despite being somewhat robust, they are tremendously agile when hunting and have no problem swimming or climbing. The most striking external characteristic of tigers, in addition to his large fangs, is perhaps its beautiful orange or golden fur with dark vertical stripes. This pattern of stripes, evident in their coat, is unique in each specimen, and the background coloration varies according to the subspecies, that is, it may be lighter or darker orange, and the stripes may appear broader or narrower. For example, tigers located in Southeast Asia tend to show more streaks than other tigers. Also, they have a white circle behind the ears which are believed to work as elements to express aggression or as fake eyes to predators. 
Their stripe pattern is similar to the way our fingerprints makes each one of us unique, this is how researchers can identify them during observation in a natural habitat setting. The way how their stripes are in the coat though serves a purpose that is well beyond basic identification. It is the way in which they can successfully camouflage in the wild from predators, and it is also one of the most useful tools they have for sneaking up on prey. White Tigers Not all tigers have a background orange color, for example, the white tigers that feature black stripes and blue eyes are the result of a gene mutation in the coloring, and it rarely occurs in the wild. However, due to their popularity, they are intentionally bred in some zoos. The existence of white tigers implies the lack of a recessive gene that gives them a coat of very clear or almost whitish background, often considered white. The white tigers are not albino since they retain their dark stripes and their eyes present a blue color and not pink or red, as would be expected in an albino specimen. Other parts of the tiger anatomy The tail, which measures about 1 meter in length, is slightly thick with fringes. Its function is to maintain the balance of the body, especially when an individual turns abruptly. The eyes contain a circular pupil, and the iris is yellow except for the white specimens. Numerous papillae cover the tongue, resulting in a rough texture to the touch. Both the legs and the shoulder regions of tigers are extremely muscular and powerful, which gives them the ability to subdue various types of prey instantly. They also have paws which help them to climb and to grasp things being the ones of males larger than those of the females. Interestingly, they have the hind legs longer than the front legs which also help to increase the jumping ability. In the latter they have long retractable claws attached to the five fingers, the back legs only have four fingers. The four legs have pads similar to those of domestic cats, which allow them to stalk their prey silently. White tigers have pink pads. Their claws are extremely sharp. From the five claws they have on each front foot, the first one never touches the ground. Each of these claws has a cover so that they don't get exposed and worn out when they don't need to use them. They sometimes scratch their claws against the trees probably to keep them sharp. They have heterodont dentition where the long canines of 2.5 to 3 inches in length stand out. They have pressure-sensitive nerves which are ideal to give the fatal bite in the vertebrae of their prey. In total, their mouth has 30 dental pieces. Tiger Senses Hearing The ear is the sharpest and best developed sense of tigers and plays an important part during their hunting activities. In general, cats have better capabilities than humans to perceive acute sounds, up to 60 kHz. Tigers have a maximum sensitivity of 300 to 500 Hz and can hear infrasounds that a person cannot listen. Sight Another significant advantage of tigers is their eyesight. They can see just as well as humans during the day. However, at night their capacity is six times better than ours making much easier to them sneak up on their prey. Their vision is binocular because of the position of the eyes on each side of the head. This feature facilitates the calculation of distances to their prey. They have more rod cells than cone cells, this means that their vision in the dark is excellent and useful for detecting movements. Like other animals, it has behind the retina a structure called tapetum lucidum that amplifies light signals and consequently improves the night vision. Smell In contrast to the ear, their sense of smell is not very sharp, so it does not play a significant role in hunting. However, it is useful for detecting odorous signs from other tigers. They have a modest amount of olfactory cells in the nose and an olfactory bulb in the brain. Taste Within their oral cavity, they have only a few hundred taste buds that are few compared to the thousands present in the tongue of a human, but some think that they can perceive salty, acid, and bitter flavors. It is not sure that they can taste sweet flavors. Touch Regarding their sense of touch, the skin, or the vibrissi, commonly called whiskers, are the ways to perceive it. All tigers have five types of vibrissi with sensory nerves to orient themselves, detect dangers and attack. Also, the face has sensitive neurons that detect changes in air pressure when an object pass. Tiger Vocalizations Tigers have several ways in which they communicate with each other, and not all are vocalizations. For example, 
they may arch their backs and put out the claws when they feel threatened, or they are ready to fight. This demonstration is a great way to scare other tigers or other animals in the area to make them back away and avoid a fight. They would rather warn them instead of engaging in a fight. The social relationships are one of the core functions of living beings, which is manifested mainly among mammals. Based on this, tigers need to communicate with each other to provide and receive information that allows them to perform some functions and increase their chances of survival. Nonverbal Communication For example, it is a fact that they are highly territorial and respond aggressively if any individual approaches their domains, but what they do to avoid the intrusion. Tigers can do three things in the trees or rocks, leave marks with the claws, deposit their feces or spray a mixture of urine and a secretion from an anal gland. This nonverbal communication is a sign that tells marauders that they are entering an occupied territory, and they can get information about the gender, identity and reproductive status of the tiger or tigress that left that scent in the tree or rock. That's why females that are just about to get into heat increase the frequency of spraying, so males know that they are available to mate. The smell of urine lasts up to 40 days at the site deposited, which by the way can also be tall grass or even other tigers. The smell is also very useful for puppies, as each has a characteristic smell, they can recognize and trace their mother through her urine. Cats are known to have odoriferous glands on specific parts of the body such as the tail, anus, lips and the region between the toes, and the tigers are no exception. Body Postures other communication resources are some movements and positions of the body. When a tiger is calm and relaxed, the tail hangs languidly. However, if it has to defend its territory, it reacts aggressively, exposing its canine teeth, widening the corners of the mouth, flattening or placing the ears backward and enlarging the eye pupils, a set of positions known as the flamen response. Sometimes they are with their ears back, their heads up high the paws down, and showing their teeth. These are indicators that a tiger is ready to pounce on some prey. If they are curious about other animals in the area, they will have their ears up, and their tail held up high instead of the usual low-lying position. This attitude shows that they are on alert but not feeling threatened at that time. The base of the tail has an anal gland that excretes a substance that they may rub on each other as well. This type of communication is used to recognize each other. There are also glands between the toes that can leave a scent as well. In fact, this is how the females communicate to the males that they are in estrus which is the frame of time when their bodies are ready to mate. Vocalizations Tigers have the ability to emit a wide variety of vocalizations to communicate over long distances in different contexts. Although roars are the best known vocalizations, they make this sound infrequently. Typically, tigers roar when they want to attract attention, a mother calling her offspring, for example, and when their intent is to provide information about their presence and location. They can also roar during mating, in hostile situations and to communicate sexual receptivity. Tigers produce roars in the hyoid apparatus, located in the oral cavity, opening and closing the mouth gradually. The loudest roar is short and involves keeping the mouth open and the canine teeth exposed. This sound, produced by the expulsion of air, is heard by all animals and humans about three miles away and is usually repeated three or four times sometimes with longer durations than the initial. Thanks to these vocalizations, scientists can identify tigers. High frequency sounds are common in long distance communications. There are other types of roaring less loud and frightening. One of them sounds like a cough and tigers make it when they are nervous because of other animals or challenge humans. The groans are even fainter, emitted with the mouth partially or entirely closed while walking with the head down. They can be heard at a distance of up to 400 meters. Other vocalizations are purrs, grunts, blows, and others. A little known sound is the prussin, a low frequency sound only heard at close range and used in friendly contexts. Mothers communicating with their offspring. Moaning is another sound that tigers use. The mothers often use it with their young to get them follow their directions and to try new things. Males may use moaning during the courting process to make females feel relaxed. They will often be heard snarling when they feel they are in danger. 
A mother is very likely to use this form of communication to keep other animals and even tiger males away from her offspring.